Louisiana Beer Reviews, Valentine Ale. America's largest selling ale, second attempt. I did a review, I shot one, came out nice, and then I put it on the computer and checked it out. It was, the audio was all scratchy, and um, I think it's just the camera's cheap. This has happened about five times before. I'm gonna have to get a new camera. 4.85% alcohol introduced around 1850 by Peter Ballantyne in New York City. Uh, it's still very common up in New York City. Uh, you see these 16 ounce cans everywhere. Bought this in 2010. It's nice, I think. And in the 22 ounce bomber bottles, which I had bought, I drank one up there and I bought, brought this one back. And then in the 40 ounce bottles. I saw it a lot in pretty much every corner store in uh, the Bronx and in Harlem, the Harlem part of Manhattan. It's very common. It's not sold anywhere around here. It's dry hopped with Cascade hops and it's fermented at higher temperatures for, and this is from the website, quote, that ale lightness, unquote, which is making me think it's really a lager that's brewed to taste somewhat like an ale. Beer Advocate and Rape Beer have it listed as an American Pale Ale. The Beer in Me has it listed as a lager, and I think it really is a hybrid. It's a lager made to be like an ale, just from what their website's saying. It's an average rating on Beer Advocate. The Bros give it an average rating, a 9 out of 100 on Rape Beer, a 3 out of 100 for the style, but it does get an excellent rating on the Beer in Me. So I've already opened it. When I did pop the cap, it had a lot of smoke. I wish you could have seen that, although, you know, it's no big deal, but it did look nice. There was a whiff of skunkiness from this green bottle. But that dissipated very quickly. And, and it had a thick white head and a very clear bubbly, and it's still pretty bubbly. It was really bubbly at first, uh, golden appearance. If you ever get a chance to go to Chicago, you sh oh, and the cap is your typical PAPS. Finest quality cap with the puzzle in the inside that I can never figure out. If you ever go to Chicago, go see the White Sox. Here's a 2011 schedule, pocket schedule. I like to save these. Their ticket prices are a little expensive, but uh, since their attendance has been down lately, you can get the $12 tickets for most of the games. That's what I paid last year, 12 bucks. Uh, it's a really nice stadium, really nice, A-rated. Here's a stadium guide from 2009. It's really not a booklet, though. It's just a big sheet of paper that's folded up. So they're being kind of cheap there, because other <coughs> major league teams give you a booklet, actual book. Oh, well. So go there. Um, Let's go with the smell test, the second attempt. <laughs> like in the last aborted review, you really don't get any skunkiness after that whiffs away. You, ju you just get a malty, um, cracker, bready aroma with a little bit of a, a little bit of hop floralness. I I guess it's like a flowery hop aroma that must be coming from the dry hop. But overall, it's a really good aroma. I don't see anything wrong with it. Let's go with the taste. Readiness. Um, can't have my can get messed up in this wind. Uh, breadiness. There's a nice hop spice to it. The IBU on this must be around a 17 or a 20 as compared to American, regular American style beers, which is around 12. Backfire. Uh, breadiness, sweetness, um, that hop hoppiness, the body is light to medium and the finish is crisp clean, refreshing, and and pretty dry. Really, what I'm thinking this reminds me of really reminds me of Heineken. 
Although I think it's sweeter than Heineken. But that hoppiness that you get with Heineken, I don't know. It's hard to figure this out. I really can't figure this out. I'm doing a bad job describing it. I mean, it's just a sweet, bready, somewhat spicy beer. And I can see why it's so popular in New York, and I don't know why they don't try to promote it more. I guess that company is cash poor. They've been, they're lucky they're still in business, but uh, it's funny, it says on the bottle, uh, Falstaff Brewing. Yeah, right, Falstaff. Falstaff did buy Valentine's out in 1972, but they were on the skid, so they got bought out themselves in 75 by Paps, so they don't even make Falstaff beer anymore. They haven't made that since 2005. I'm going to say this is a B plus, but really that's, I'm probably lowballing it. I mean, this is really interesting. And I, I should have brought some cans back and compared the two, but. I mean, for an inexpensive budget price beer. With so much flavor. So much character. Um. It probably really deserves an A minus, but if you didn't have that initial skunkiness, it'd probably be an A minus. And the can is probably an A minus, so it's at least a B plus, at least a B plus. So les a, les bon temps roulés, let the good times roll. This is a very good beer. I'm glad I picked it up. Hope this video comes out. All right, I'm gonna end this review by saying y'all come on down to New Orleans.